Whoa, that went live like my finger was trigger happy, <laughs> I guess for live. Hey, happy Tuesday, Revelation Wellness Community, Elisa Keaton on this page, Revelation Wellness Facebook Healthy and Whole page. I can't believe how long we've been doing this. How long have we been hanging out together? Since 2011. 10 years. Oh, I'm actually wearing one of the shirts that's Revelation Wellness that's kind of somewhere it has the year. Oh, it's way down here. I won't, I won't show you. Hi friends, Elisa Keaton. If this is in your page or falling into your feed, it's because somebody was awesome, shared it, and the algorithm was favorable for us to meet today. So we are really happy you're here. If you check out what the title is about, that's what we're going to talk about. The three things your brain, oh, I got to go get my brain. So hold on. Three things your brain needs to do in order for you to live well in your body. What we do here at Revelation Wellness is we connect this message of the gospel that in the beginning God created and said in our likeness, let's create man and woman and they are to subdue the earth, fill it, have dominion, all these things that life was meant to be that we are all fighting back to, to get back to, but yet there's a struggle and our bodies and our minds and there's a disassociation that happens. So we're taking that gospel message, which is the foundation of the world on which everything is built, including your body. And then also saying, let's bring it together in a practical ways that we don't just have a faith. We live out a faith. That a faith can just be something that you have and it's like a good concept, but until it's lived out in your body, it's not a reality. Can I get an amen? So that's what we do here. So I'm going to take a few minutes to let everyone come in. If you're watching this on the replay, you can push forward for about four minutes or five minutes or so, just so we can all get a little chit chat time as we are here live. And it's Tuesday. I get to be with you. How are you guys? How was your weekend? If you're coming in, I'm having a hard time. Would you guys hit the chat? Oh, I think my... My app makes me crazy. Okay, I can see. All right, I can see. Roberta, thank you for saying amen. Thank you. Listen, just work the chat for me real quick so I know that hey, Facebook is being happy uh, and, and pleasurable towards us. And just let me know where you are. Hey, Elisa, it's so good to see you. Thanks, Roberta. I missed you guys last week. I have been slammed with all kinds of good things going on. <laughs> Weeks have been very, very full. And pretty soon we have an announcement to make. You'll find that out next week next week on the podcast we're going to make a pretty big announcement oh it's it's big it's something you'd want to know if you're a regular uh <clears throat> a friend of revelation wellness then you're going to want to know this news so it's in preparation of that news i've been busy i just got back from revelation from not revelation wellness from the idea fitness convention world fitness convention it was in las vegas if you follow me on my instagram stories i took you with me did, did anyone here follow me on my Instagram stories? You, if you followed my Instagram stories, you got like serious teaching last week. I gave you the latest and the greatest of what's going on when it comes to health and wellness. And it was so encouraging. You want to know what was so encouraging about being in that environment? And I've been going to that fitness convention for... I have, I've been uh, licensed or certified as a fitness professional since... You ready? Since 1991. So, and I've gone, I've actually went even before I was, I was certified. So I've been going to that convention year after year for many, many years. And here's what I can tell you. Here's what's very optimistic. Catherine, you followed me. Catherine, if you followed me, what was something you took away from what I was saying last week is giving you my daily updates of what's going on in the industry. Here's what I was very encouraged to see. That fitness is changing. The dialogue, the conversation is changing for the better. The diversity is there. The inclusivity is there. The openness to have a bigger conversation is there and the actual need for people because what's happened is fitness and health and this, this, this real craze in a way has come on the scenes around in the 1980s. It really got its, its legs underneath itself. And we've been watching this thing change and grow with popularity and uh, financial investment. It is definitely now a $4, million, $4 trillion industry for sure, soon to be a $5 trillion industry in wellness. 
And we have a people that are now have aged 30 years. Hi. Hi, that's me. And the needs have shifted. The needs have changed. The conversation has to get bigger. How do we fit in? What is What does it mean to have a body and, and live well all your life? Now, man, remember, this convention was not... Uh, it's not faith-based. Although Billy Blanks was there. And if anyone knows Billy Blanks, that man brought the gospel with him. And he was given the Jack LaLanne Award, which is, hello, who knows who Jack LaLanne is? Anyone? Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do a teaching just on Jack LaLanne. Can I, I think I want to do that for funsies. We should do that. He got the award, the achievement award from uh, the Jack LaLanne. And so he got to take the stage, you guys, and he just brought the gospel. If you followed me on my stories, you saw that. He, he was really saying the, the theme of the convention was limitless. That's what they called it, limitless. And he got up there and said, well, thank you for this award. And I've been able to truly live a limitless life, but let me tell you why. Now, this is true for me, may not be true for you, but the reason that I have a limitless, limitless life is because of my faith and love for and a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And like from a stage, 2,000 people, he had that going out. He preached the gospel. It was amazing. So I feel like there's a nod. God is hearing our prayers. So if you have been with Revelation Wellness following us for some time, this is the dialogue we need to have that, yes, we have these desires within us to transcend, to live a bigger, healthy, whole, vibrant life. Even though things come against us, how can we stay well in mind? How can we say to the storm, be peace, be still? And we can do that. And we have that invitation, but yet we struggle to get there. So we've been working this out for 10 years. And we're going to continue today to help you understand yourself as an Imago Dei, as an image bearer of God, and also how you operate, how this, this thing works. Because I think if you have knowledge of how it works, then you have authority over it. Right? Knowledge is power. We've heard that. So if you have some knowledge of how it works, then you can actually begin to empower by the grace of God an authority over your body. Because your body was given to you so that the Great Commission could be fulfilled. That you could multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And as Jesus said in his commission to us, now go and make disciples. But nobody wants to be the follower, which that's really a disciple is someone who's learning and following and, and, and learning from someone else ahead of them. Nobody wants to follow a bitter Christian, an angry one, one that... that says one thing with their mouth, but does another thing with their life? Come on. Am I, I'm preaching. This is a thing. This is the thing. This is why I get up out of bed every morning. And this is why I put my heart on the altar. Like, God, search me. Know me. I can't proclaim this thing and preach this thing without it being done to me over and over. So my heart gets filleted over and over because there is hell that has come against me. And Jesus comes to love the hell out of us. Amen. So this is, this is a process. So if I give you some understanding of how your brain works, it's really cool because then you can have some authority. Oh, hey, wait. All right. I know what's going on here. It's not so spiritualized or you're not so disassociated from what's going on. A lot of people spiritualize, oh, that's the devil. No, it's actually your brain chemistry. <laughs> Just your brain chemistry. Yeah, the devil's there too. I mean, he's trying to create a mess, but you have authority over what's going on in this physical realm that you've been given authority over. Um, I want to go get my brain. So hang on a second and then I'll, I'll like, we'll officially start the teaching. I love it. Oh, scripture, everyone put some scripture in the, ver put something right now, put something in the comments that God has showed you. Maybe it's today. I hope so. I hope you've spent some time in the word today. Even if you just read a devotion, you don't even have to know the Bible verse. What has God taught you? today as you leaned into his word go put it in the chat while i go get my brain like the one you can see keep going
Proverbs 29, 25. Fear God, not man. That's a word. <laughs> that is a word of the words. That's, that's a big, big word. Fear God, not man. Pray without ceasing. He will never leave me. Oh, man, I should just come to Facebook Lives where you guys, you guys proclaim. You're preaching right now. You're preaching the gospel. I always forget my brain. Yes, I do. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, Ruth. To wait for God's timing. Battling is nonstop here. Yes, it is nonstop here. Fight the good fight. 2 Timothy 1.7 For the Lord did not give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. He is with me. Yes. Psalm 34.5 Our face is never covered in shame. Never. Those who look to him. Those who look to him. Their faces are never covered in shame. Woo! Look at this. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they have life and have it to the full abundantly. Right? That, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. I'm here that you would have life. Like Jesus said that. Now I'm just going to come back it up. Back it up over and over so that you don't live a half full life. That you actually are going from glory to glory. That doesn't happen in an instant. This takes training. Let me, let me ask you the difference. Put it in the chat. What is the difference between, between teaching and training? What's the difference to have teaching about something and then to have training about something? Tell me the difference. Y'all are still going with your word. Go ahead. Oh, that's right. Don't, it's never wasted. What is the difference between a teaching and a training? Absolutely. Cindy said it. Action. Action. I love it. Jesus didn't just come to teach. He also showed. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen do you the works that I've do, been doing, greater than, greater than these will you do. But there is a connection. This isn't just information. I have to apply it. I have to work it out. Training is hands-on action. Y'all, and where do you get your hands on every day? In your everyday, in your everyday, when you get out of bed and your feet hit the floor, training has begun. Let the training begin. Be led by the spirit and not by your flesh. And the spirit will lead you into some adversity sometimes. Sometimes you're going to come into that storm. It's not a surprise. Oh, here it is. So the reason I show up here is to train you to get you ready for the unexpected. We don't just do squats to do squats and have bigger quads and thighs. We do squats so I can get up out of the chair and sit back down. You want to know one of the hardest things to do? And this is a side note. It's a freebie. If you want to know how really mobile and act and well you are in body for movement, try to sit down on the floor and stand back up without putting your hands down. <laughs> it's hard to do. I'm going to do a reel on that as a little test. Try to just sit on the ground without using your hands. And most people will use their hands to go down and then try to get back up without using your hands. That's like the most fit. That's a really good measure read of how your flexibility is, how your mobility is, how your strength is. But most people have to put their hands down and kind of push themselves up. And the whole point of having a body is so you can get through your day. So you can get about whatever you've been called to do. So the body becomes the force, the, the delivery system for whatever's going on inside of you. So when the moment shows up of adversity, of something you didn't expect, you have trained for it. We do squats so that when we fall down, we can get back up. And hopefully we won't fall down. If we stumble, we can catch ourselves, our legs kick in, and our body stands right back up upright. So when was the last time something unexpected happened to you in your day? Something that knocked the peace out of you? Put it in the chat. When was the last time something unexpected happened and it just, it, it knocked you sideways? Tell me anything. You don't even have to, you don't put to say who it was, just circumstance. 
I've, I've always had a few, but there's always these big ones that kind of stick out in the last month or so. One that I know, oh, that was a test. And some of them I pass and some of them I fail. Yo, I fail air travel last week with nine hour delay. That'll test you. I always tell our staff when we do lots of flights, we have to go here and there to meet and, and, and do meetings together. We wake that morning of, we pray for the travel and we tell everyone, remember, you're on mission. The ticket counter person, whoever, whatever happens today, if you come in late, you miss your plane, don't worry about it. This is the assignment. The assignment is now. It's not when you get here, we'll act all Christian and good. We'll actually, let's be that now. So be ready, prepare your minds and go train. For me, it was recently, we were in Hawaii on a beautiful summer vacation. This is the last summer before my daughter goes off to college. I've got three weeks left with her, three weeks, a little even less than three weeks, and she goes off to college and I have an empty nest and it's a lot of change. That's a lot of change, everyone. And inside of her and inside of me and inside of my husband, there's just a sadness, a fear. There's just, it's, there's stuff rumbling around. I can actually start to cry as I talk about it. It's change and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's wrecking me. And we're all holding this stuff inside of us and we're trying to have this kumbaya, beautiful summer moment together. And there were things happening in the time together that were not what I would hope for. It's not what I would have expected. Sophia saying some things that I would never have expected and it was knocking me off my feet. I was getting caught up in the words she was saying and my heart was hurting. You know, sometimes our kids say things or our loved ones say things or we say things and we get all caught up in the, the storm and feel like what just happened? I just got the peace knocked out of me. Now, Remember, parents, this is for free. If you are the parent of a child, please re repeat after me. I do not take my cues from my children. <laughs> I do not take my cues from my children. I do not take my lead from my children. I am the parent. They are the child. They are looking for stability. They are looking for safety. They're looking for belonging, even when they don't behave well. And when they say things, they say them, we've all said them. And then in all things, remember this, pray without ceasing. And remember their frontal lobes are not closed. They don't, they have half a brain. They literally don't have a full brain. So do not take your cues from your child, whether they're one, two, five, 10, 18, about to go to college, Around the time they're 25, really around the time you're 25 or so, you'll actually start to see the person there they are, and then they're still going to evolve and change, but they at least have a full functioning brain. So we train to prepare. Now in that moment when Sophia was saying things, I wasn't doing well. I was letting you know my heart was hurt. Why? Because I'm carrying around a lot of grief and fear and sadness and excitement. I got a lot of stuff going on inside of me. So I had to pull back and train. When we train, we have to remember to bring things to mind. When we are training, we're bringing things on purpose to mind. And in order to bring things to our mind, we must prepare our mind. You won't know what to bring to mind if you don't, if you haven't prepared your mind. This is why I love 1 Peter 1.13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hey, by the way, if this is already blessing you, would you hit share? Hit share. And side note, this is the last day to get your early bird pricing. I just want to say that in case I forget, because I can get all caught up in the teaching. I forget to serve you. For those of you that are going to come through instructor training, it's your last day to get the early bird discount. And we start in like two weeks, so don't delay. Okay, back to the teaching. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. Let me give you a little context. Paul is writing to the believers who are confused because they are suffering persecution. There is suffering. 
because of their faith, they are having trials and testing going, what's going on, right? Again, something happened. They weren't expecting that. And so Paul comes to deliver a truth. Listen, this is okay. This is part of it. This is actually proving that your faith will be genuine. He was saying it in prior verses. That's why the therefore comes in. He's like, this is proving your faith to be genuine. This is part and parcel for the deal. And by the way, hear me. This is where, this is where I love the gospel. It's so concrete. Everyone's suffering. Nobody gets to escape it. Nobody gets out of this world unscathed. But for those who follow Christ, our suffering has a purpose. For those who have no following, no belief in God, knowledge of God, or even just a religious system, they will, religious systems are set up so that you don't have to suffer. You try to stay away from suffering. Actually, suffering is seen as sinful. Like, oh, they must be doing something wrong because they're suffering. No, suffering is going to happen. But there's a point. It produces something in us. If you don't have God and you suffer, when you don't, when you suffer, not if you don't have God and when you suffer, then you're suffering, you will do other things. You will turn to escapism. You will turn to numbing. You will turn to coping. You will turn to addictions. You will turn to other things to try and dampen down the suffering. But we know, as neuroscience tells us, if you suffered, if you dampen the brain's ability to feel suffering, you also dampen the ability to feel joy. This is why. If we want to make our joy complete, we have to prepare and train. Therefore, we are to prepare our minds for action. Let me give you a side note just for those who haven't remembered this. This is your brain, half of your brain, but let's pretend it's the full brain. This is the left hemisphere. Let's pretend the right is there, but this is your full brain. Your brain is an organ in your body, like your heart, like your lungs. It's good by design. It's physical matter. Like I could actually open your skull and see your brain. But your brain doesn't do anything until there's a mind behind it. There's a consciousness. Consciousness, you've heard that word. Don't freak out. It's not new age. It's old age. It's how God created the world. God had in mind. <laughs> conscious. God was conscious of there couldn't be more to creation. So I'm going to create something seen. So the brain becomes like the computer system for your mind. Your mind is the operating system. Your mind is the software. What am I conscious of? But your brain just boop, 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 computes like a little computer. Okay? The difference between your mind is it's, it's not matter. It's, it's just this, this power that's untouchable that is what you are conscious of. And we know what you focus on, you become. What you focus on gets larger. It grows. What you're conscious of, you become. So if your mind is set on things above, then you will manifest, bring to earth, which that word is not new age either. Jesus talked about manifesting him. You want to show more of the kingdom, have your mind set on the kingdom. If you want to show more of the earth, have your mind set on the earth. Your mind, what are you conscious of? That's what you will produce more of in your life. I have a friend today who is getting a test done and, you know, there's, could be concern. Let's get a test result. Hey, the test came back. Not good. We got to do another, another something, something. And you know, that sucks for a second. She could allow herself to let her mind go to worst case scenario, but she's refusing it. And she's believing the story ends here. Nope. I'll go back. Nope. My mind is set on the peace. Set your mind on things above, not on things below. She is setting her mind in the presence of God. There's fullness of joy. She's like, no, I'm just going to stay there. I'm going to stay there. And even if something comes back and now I've got more quote evidence that there's something wrong, I am still going to stay there. I'm conscious of heaven more than I am of the earth. That doesn't mean I disregard the earth. It means it's my job. It's what we do to reconcile. We reconcile heaven and earth. So yes, we have a body and yes, it's falling apart and yes, it can be fragile, but man, we have a soul and a mind and a will that is eternal matter and that can strengthen us for the day. So therefore, how do we prepare our minds for action? First thing, I'm just going to get right to it. Spoiler alert. You got to read God's word. 
You have to read the word. That's information for an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Like when you read God's word, that's what you become conscious of. If I read my Facebook feed, I'm conscious of Facebook. If whatever I take in is what I become conscious of. So you cannot prepare your minds for action. And I'm going to get to the three things that your brain has to do. Once you're conscious of something, boop, 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 your brain does three things. I'm going to get to that. But I'm trying to lay the groundwork, the, the foundation that without a mind, what you're conscious of, then everything starts to fall apart. So if my mind is taking in information, becomes conscious of something, I need God's word. I need to know what God has said, what God is speaking, what he has said, what he is speaking now. His word, listen to this, his word helps me, written on the page, helps me to encounter the word that is whispering and speaking to my soul and my consciousness. I'll come back to how that played out even with Sophia. So read God's word because God's word rewires our brain, which serves the will of our minds. Your mind has a will. Your soul has a will. That's part of like the soul. You got this will. And if your soul is set on things below, then your consciousness of your mind will aim in that direction and you'll reap some things. They just won't be eternal and they will be stolen, killed and destroyed. They're things that cannot last. But if your will and your mind sets itself on things above, then you have more eternal hope that, Hey, even if I, even if this thing happens, even if God is still good, that's a health for your day. All right. Now preparing your mind for action, you got to read God's word. Then here we go. Then when things come against us in the day, which they will, Remember I told you, the minute your feet hit the floor, you're on mission. Get ready. That's why we armor up, put on the armor and be ready. You're, you're meant for this tension. You're, you're not meant for no problems whatsoever in this world. You will have problems. There will be trouble, but you are meant to have good courage, take heart and overcome. But to overcome something means that you're underneath something. So when that tension comes, when that disruptor happens we have to then begin the training that we need the executive function of our brain is meant to take over when disruptors in our life occur making it possible for us to navigate well life's difficulties so first thing we need to remember if we are stuck in our emotional brain in our limbic brain we will find it hard to get up into reasoning. Your brain has an emotional area. Primarily it's down here in the lower parts, your limbic brain. How many of you know this teaching? I want you to know this teaching so much that you can teach it to others. I needed someone to teach this to me when I was 13, 14, freaking out. Nobody was listening to me and I was starting rebellious things. I didn't understand. This part of my brain was very super active at 13, 14. Anyone else? And this emotional brain starts to lay down patterns into the, the uh, prefrontal medial cortex where there's executive reasoning and thinking happens. Children have this, it's just not well developed. Then depending on if they have a good environment that supports, this will develop strong or more feeble. So when disruptors happen, this emotional brain kicks in we have to have a way to get up into some higher reasoning. And this is why we rev you guys. This is why I we encourage you. Revving means get in your body and hear God's word. That's what rev, revving means. It's a verb does revelation wellness. Rev, are you revving? Revving means you have to get in your body and remember God's word. And we do that with our revving the words where we say, Hey, let's go for a walk. We're going to get in our bodies and you're going to hear God's word. Hey, let's sit down, be still. Let's do some breath work and let's remember God's word, right? This is all about, we've got to get back into our body because this, this part, your emotional brain is very much connected to the body because it's meant to keep you safe and your body wants to keep you safe. This is your home. Keep it safe. So we get locked down in that place, which then it makes it difficult to go into a higher reasoning. 
This is where higher reasoning happens in the prefrontal medial cortex. And once we're in the high place of executive reasoning, three things take place in your brain. Now I'm going to get to those three things that have to happen. But again, those three things can't happen in this executive functioning if you are stuck down here in your emotion over and over and over. This is why we rev. Go for a walk. Get in your body. Breathe. And hear God's word. And really, it is. It has been. Uh, it's shown when you when you exercise, it occupies the limbic brain, so that you can have a thought without having an emotion. If you understand what I'm saying, a lot of times our emotions are just there to keep us safe, so we never can really access higher reasoning. But when we exercise, that area gets active, and it's kind. Of, it's like putting a stick in the elephant's trunk at the circus, so it stays. And now we can come up higher and get into some higher thought, even though you still have emotion, emotion is good, they're not going to go away. Emotions are there to help lead us into the presence of God, or kind of help us know where we're at. Oh, I am angry. Woo, I need to get back towards the goodness of God. I need to get back. What did God say in his word? What are the promises? And that's how I can renew my mind. All right, so do we understand that you won't be able, these three things that occur in your brain when disruptors happen, you can't even get there if you are just stuck in your emotional pain. I'm writing a book right now. It will come out in less than a year. And it's going to, I cannot wait for this book to come out because it's going to get after this. going to help you get back a full life, a healthy brain, a healthy body in very, very practical ways with Jesus at the center. Who's down for that? Okay, so let's assume now the thing happens, the disruptor happens, that you've trained for it. You're like, yep, that's going to happen. Someone's going to make me probably feel insecure today or I'm going to get upset. Who knows? But you've trained to realize it's going to happen and you're going to feel it. Before you have a thought, you have a feeling. It happens so fast you don't even know it. But mostly it's a feeling. It's a feeling that then it connects right away to that thought that you have. And if it's a thought that you always constantly have, it's because you're stuck in your limbic brain. It's the thought that keeps you safe. So if you're stuck down there, you won't get your brain to do the three things that keeps your body well. And actually, if you stay down in that limbic emotional area, it is connected to lots of physical pain. Inflammation in the body, chronic disease, cellular breakdown, your immune system breaks down. If the amygdala in your limbic brain is so like wrapped with energy, then it will pull itself and work itself into the body in destructive ways. So we got to come up higher. We got to come up higher and we have to learn how to stay high. All right. Now let's just say that you, okay, you felt it. And then you recognize this is not of this is not of the father's heart. Peace be still. All right, I'm feeling this like my friend who got the die, you know, some concern. Okay, I feel that. Nope, I'm going to stay high. Now here's what happens. Once in the high place of executive reasoning of your prefrontal medial cortex, once you can come up here, even though you're feeling scared, you come up. These three things have to take place in your brain. Now get ready. This is exciting. Hey, if this is blessing you, hit share. Please hit share. Here's the three things that have to happen. The first, I'm going to just, I'm going to name them out and then I'm going to come right back to each of them. First thing, a working memory. The second thing, mental flexibility. And the third, cognitive inhibition. And I'm going to really expand upon that one. So the thing is happening, the disruptor happened, but you are coming up higher because you notice this doesn't feel good. I don't want to live here. I got to come up higher. As you come up higher, your working memory kicks in. This is the ability to work with information without losing track of what we're doing. It's the ability to take in some new information, but still remember where you are in tracking in time. It doesn't kick you off of, of, you don't get caught and swept up into this new narrative. You actually remember, oh, I woke up this morning 
and I'm going to have peace. Oh, but there's some new information coming in. <laughs> Do you see how this takes calm? This takes an ability to be attuned to what's going on with you. Working memory is the ability to maintain focus. Working memory also happens when you hear a story. This is why Jesus talks in parables, and I've been doing a whole teaching on parables in the podcast if you follow along. Parables or telling a story is really cool because it requires executive functioning. As you're hearing a story, you've got to come up higher and think imaginatively and creatively. That doesn't necessarily happen down the limbic brain. Limbic is just kind of staying alive, staying alive. Okay, so I'm going to come up. Let's go up higher. Let's tell a story. So as you're doing that, working memory is happening as you are hearing the story and tracking along and trying to remember parts and pieces of the story that are important while also going on the journey of the story. Isn't that cool? So cool. A working memory. Think about it. Memory means something you already know, but working means you're also trying to learn something new. So when a story is told, the working memory gets kicked in. Okay, so when a disruptor shows up, we need a working memory. A working memory. The ability to maintain focus even though some new information is coming in. Mental flexibility. That's our willingness to shift our thought patterns, to respond to a situation in a less rigid way. Our willingness, this is willingness to shift, to be flexible. I mean, it's in there in the title. It's a flexibility. It's a resilience. Like, okay, all right, I'm going to flex on this. It's our ability to adapt and change rather than shut down. So here's an example. Your child says something disrespectful, and you have the power to end the conversation and even ground the kid. You can, you have the power. You're the one in authority. You can shut that thing down. But instead, you choose to ask them if there's something they need. If there's something they need from you that they aren't getting. That's a, I like to call it a Jedi Jesus move. It, they aren't expecting that. As things get higher and heated, you have the power to shut it down and be rigid. You can get more rigid, but instead you choose to soften back and think more objectively. Is there something you need that I'm not giving? Is there something? You bow yourself to the other person. That's a flexibility. I mean, even just the, the mental image of bowing means I'm going to flex. I'm going to bend on this. So how can I serve you in this storm we seem to be caught up in? Mental flexibility. In order for you to stay well, do you see how if your brain does these things, you're going to stay well. You're not going to get caught up in the cyclone. You're welcome, Heather. It's my joy. Okay, then finally, cognitive inhibition. Working memory, cognitive flexibility or mental flexibility, and cognitive inhibition. This is one of my favorite ones. Cognitive inhibition. <laughs> it's the mind's ability to tune out stimuli that is irrelevant to the task at hand or the mind's current state. It's your ability to tune it out. No. We're not even going to entertain this. This is so far off where I want to go because I have focus. No. This is one of my favorite examples of cognitive inhibition. Think about it. inhibition. No, we're not going there. You guys have heard me say on the podcast, we don't do that anymore. Like, no, we, no, no, no. We shut it down. The ability to tune out stimuli that is irrelevant to the task at hand. What is the task at hand? Multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion, make disciples. That's always your task. So cognitive inhibition, if your brain can go, no, we don't do this, that's part of staying well. Here's a great example. This actually happened a lot, about maybe a year or two ago, and I, it was stuck with me as this is, 
This is what we need. This is the part of our brain that wants to do what it needs to do to keep us well and not just surviving, but thriving. I was watching this woman and she was on a Instagram live doing a workout and she is a plus size woman, someone that we'd say bigger size than what at that time the industry would uh, you know, call more seen. I think we're seeing it now, praise God, more stuff. Everyone has a body, just move the dang thing. So she was working out and she had a band around her thighs, like one of those big rubber bands, resistance band, and she's placing it on her thigh and every time she would um, place it or try to move it up, it kept getting stuck on her thigh. She couldn't get it to come up to where she wanted it. And then when she would get it there, it would start to roll down again. So she knew that, okay, the band won't stay there, but, and then she said that she's like, the band is giving me issues because of my, because of my size. And she knew like my size, it's the, it's the band circumference to her circumference weren't matching up. And she's like, the band's giving me an issue because of the, my thigh. She goes, but I don't have time to spend on that story. There it is. I don't have time to spend on that story. So I'm just going to keep going. Come on. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what I'm trying to do. I'm still going to do this thing that I'm called to do. I don't have time to make up that story. I don't have time to spend time with that story. It goes nowhere. Her mind has been cognitively inhibited. She will not go there. It is her ability to tune out any stimuli that is irrelevant to the task at hand. It's one of my favorite cognitive inhibition. <laughs> Cause I'll be honest, mental flexibility takes me a while. It tends to take me a while. So usually when I'm in an, a disrupted moment, I first go, no, oh, no, this isn't of the Lord. This, this isn't how I would want this to go. No, no, no. So I have to shut down any stimuli that tries to tell me otherwise. And then it's then I can get more flexible and I can take in some information that they're saying while still staying on task. What is my task? Unity, love, joy, peace. But I can still hear information. Yeah. <laughs> I don't just walk on by that stimuli. That's right. I don't have time for that. I don't have time. I don't have time to spend on that story. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Yep. So in closing, how's your preparing of your mind and action going? How you doing? How's your training going? Preparing your mind for action, preparing your mind. Again, your mind says, I'm set on the things of God. Great. Okay. I'm set on the things of God. Now brain cognitively flex, work your memory and stay inhibited to the things that are of this earth. We just don't have time for that stimuli. Tune it out. Remember, see, that's the thing. I could be inhibited and say no, but then I have to stay flexible. I have to be able to bend. What does this situation need? And then I can stay in building a memory, creating a new memory in the moment, rather than saying, oh, that's just always how things go. So when it came to Sophia, as I started this teaching with that story, in that moment, I felt hurt. I felt myself get, whoo, limbic brain overload. And I knew at that time, I have to take a step back. Um, I was hurt. There was things that just spun me around and I had to take a step back. And I've had this conversation with my daughter and with my loved ones. Like when I pull back, it's not, I'm mad at you. Shame on you. I'm not doing it to withhold. I just, I need a minute. I got to find me. I got to find the Lord and find me because I don't want to say something I don't mean. So, and, and by the way, that's a, that's a teaching right there. You, you can, you have permission to take the time you need. The first person to fix the situation and be godly isn't necessarily the one who's more whole, like be whole and then fix it. Learn what you need to learn for you. Not, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do here. Let me just do that. And then it's not really real for you. So I have to pull back. I felt the hurt. I pulled back. I remembered that I'm the parent here 
And then I began to construct the story of a better outcome that I wanted. Like, Lord, I got with the Lord. What, what's really going on here? And then he began to say, she's scared, you're scared. You know, just gave me perspective as I pulled back, worked my memory, flexed a bit. Because I could have been rigid. I could have told her, how dare you do that? I could have, like, toe-to-toe and crush her. That doesn't do anything. But I did stay inhibited to, no. I love her. She loves me. We're going through a time. God is for us. Who can be against us? So as I did that, and to be honest with you, I also reached out to a couple friends and said, hey, would you pray? There's just a lot. It's just a lot. It's a, a swirly time. And by the way, for any of you who send a kid off to college, it's par for the course. They can get pretty jerky before they go to college because they're scared. And they're purposely trying to push away to prepare because soon they will have to be on their own. So remember that. Ugh, I could cry. It's a beautiful survival tactic. And you want to encourage that they're going. Change is happening. It's going to be okay. So you don't get sucked into the cyclone. After a while, I then, after I, I put in that prayer request, you guys, did you pray for me? And then I pursued and pressed in to her and even in that conversation it didn't go great for her but for me I was steady I knew where I was going to stay and I knew how I wanted the conversation to end that basically no matter what I love you no matter what I know that this feels confusing time you'll figure it out I'm not changing anything about my mind about who you are and to be honest with you the conversation ended, we went back, and it didn't end the way I wanted it to end. I was like, well, at least I know, as far as it depends on me, I am living at peace with her. And then I went back into the condo, and she went into her bathroom, and we had a moment, you know, just probably about 10, 20 minutes later, I was getting in the shower, and she comes over, she knocks on the door, and she says, Mom, I'm sorry. I've really been a, and it rhymes with witch. <laughs> Praise God, right? I'm like, okay, forgiven and free. We'll figure it out. It's a, it's a hard time right now for you. We'll figure it out. There you go. That is a teaching for you on the three things you've got to get your mind to, to keep your body and mind well. And by the way, that is good for your body. I'm not carrying around resentment. I'm not carrying around bitterness. I'm not carrying around manipulation. I'm not carrying around fear. I'm just like, you know what? No. No. We're going to stay rooted in what I know to be true. Any questions? You can ask it now. Last day for early bird sign up. I'm going to pray. Jesus, thank you so much for... <laughs> How you've made us so complex and so diverse and you hold it all together you hold us together in you all things hold together our our bodies our beings our, our wills our emotions everything about us is held together in you and so god i pray with this teaching that you would make us more like you you would transform us into your likeness now that we have understanding that we are not at the mercy of our feelings that our feelings are real and you gave them to us and you don't deny them and you don't shame us for them lord you actually say come to me with them and you bring us higher to where we can flex and bend and work a new memory and say no to the things that are not of you we love you Bless bodies and minds. God, I speak healing to everybody listening. Their aches and pains in their bodies, Lord, where it has been a lockdown on their emotions, would you bring healing? Would you give them the courage, the strength to, to just get in their body and breathe? And would you bring healing in Jesus' name, bring healing into bodies as they intersect with this ministry? That it would glorify you, God. Not that we would just get healing to be healed, but that we would... Have healing to testify of the one who heals. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. It was fun being with you. I hope that was fun. It's always fun teaching. Um, early bird pricing. Any questions on instructor training? Ask it here. Ask it now or forever hold your peace. Two weeks left, I think. A little, little over two weeks before we start. 
I'm excited to, I know what this platoon, this group of instructors, leaders are bringing into the ministry. I'm excited because goodness, the gift that they are going to be to us in the time we are living in is extravagant. Amen. My heart is filling. Thank you. You're welcome, Terry. Be, be well. Contain it. Let yourself be filled. Remember, if you get knocked out today, breathe, feel what you feel, then get up to the high tower and know what you need to know. You're welcome. Ruth Spencer, you're a top fan, it says. So are you, D. Johnson. Top fan. Sophia, you're an anniversary follower. I don't know what that means, but I like that. Yay. Maybe it means you've been following us for over a year or something. Denise says, I want to thank you for your teaching. My son, who is Sophia's age and heading off to college, but life came and disrupted us and him. He had a psychotic break and now on meds. He is listening and asked, and he is listening and asked me to share it with him. Oh man, everyone right now to this warrior heart, Denise's son. Listen, look right at me. You're going to be just fine. It's all going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. He loves you. He's got it. He's got it. And we speak peace over you. And we're excited to see your future. Ah, uh, hi, Vinta. Top fan number two. Very cool. Watching you from India. Vinta from India. Everyone say hi to Vinta. Hi. What time is it in Vin India, Vinta? Like, goodness. I'm so glad you're listening. Thank you. I bet you're, I bet you're a podcast listener. The podcast is getting far and wide. So cool. Bruce. <laughs> Love this. Get to the high tower. Get to the high tower. Amen. Yes. So cool. All right. I'm just making sure. Sorry if I missed something. Thank you for being vulnerable. Always. You can pray for my you guys, I tell you, a lot of people say, what about your son? You know, my son, first of all, he's at college. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do for teaching examples once Sophia's gone. I'll have a whole new life of teaching examples. Um, but my son Jack is amazing. He's just, he's always been very put together. My, my teachings around Jack are always like around, Jack, loosen up. Like, just don't take it so seriously. So he's very um heady and yet he's got emotion but it's he's just he's his own unique and Sophia probably you get the most teaching out of me from Sophia because it's healing of me like another girl I'm like oh I see me in you oh yes oh yes where Jack I'm still maybe like my husband trying to figure you out he's he's awesome though and he's fantastic I love him so much yeah Oh, well, guess what? We'll just chit chat here for a second. Simon is going to be on the podcast. It's not going to happen for a while. Um, it's going to happen and you guys will hear him in November. We haven't recorded it yet, but I asked him if he'd be willing to come on the podcast. And initially he was like, mm, cause he's a super private guy, super private. Namaste. Um, and he's willing though. So we're going to do one in August in, I'm sorry, November, you guys will hear from him. It'll be the first time ever that he'll be on the podcast. We're just going to talk a little bit about our marriage and a little bit of our, not like we're not going to dig up the past. You guys know the story, most of you, but kind of just talk about where we are today. We're going to be celebrating 25 years. Awesome. All right, you guys. Fantastic. I'll see you. I'm going to get to my next meeting. Love you. See you next Tuesday. Yes, see you next Tuesday. Don't forget to be here and invite someone. Hit share if you haven't one more time. Help us stay, have some real estate in this Facebook space and keep it. All right, peace.